Today I'm at Farup Summerland in the northwest of Denmark to experience this wonderful theme park for the first time, including getting to ride Phonix, the awesome Vekoma roller coaster that only opened last year, as well as lots of other great rides and attractions, all set in beautiful Danish countryside. So come and join me for a day at Farup Summerland and I'll even bring you on the rides with me. Good morning from Farup Summerland here in Denmark. Really interesting system coming in there. They sort of scanned your ticket as you come into the car park and that's it. So you walk into the entrance to the park. There's no like big gate system. You just walk in and then there are signs for all the different rides and attractions. So just heading in the direction of Phonix, which is their newest attraction, opened last year, really cool looking Vekoma coaster. So we're going to head in that direction. It's so picturesque here. It's very, you're like in the middle of the woodlands or something. It's really nice, scenic kind of nature-based park with a bunch of rides. So really looking forward to exploring this today. Yeah, everywhere you look, it's all like nature and lakes and then suddenly a roller coaster. So yeah, I think this is gonna be a good day. There is a slight Alton Towers vibe in some aspects as well. Like walking through here, it did just give me sort of pangs of heading towards uh, Curse at Alton Manor or sort of that, that area of the park where you do sort of walk through the trees on the paths. You yeah, know, have a lot of boating lakes here too. This is about the third that I've walked past. It's also quite windy today, so hopefully the audio is okay. And there's the station fly through. You can see they're really looking forward to that inversion. We're beginning of the day with a back row ride here on Phonix. first take on Phonix is that, that was a really impressive roller coaster. It's not super fierce, but yet the airtime that's there is aggressive. Uh, you've got two really whippy inversions in there. The drop was good at the back. So I'm gonna go around, do it at the front now. There is a little robot cutting the grass. How cool is that? Well, Phoenix absolutely delivers across the board. I think every single aspect of it kind of does what you'd expect or exceeds slightly what you'd expect. The drop's really cool. And I like the fact that the, the cable gets you up there super quickly. The stall loop is good. I think the vest restraints do limit the hang time a little when compared to like the Intamin and the Mac model. So I rode Nafiano Force at Emerald Park last week, which is also the coma. That interestingly didn't have the vest restraints and that had uh, inversion. So I'm hoping maybe that's a direction that the coma are heading in. That would be really cool to see. Then that second inversion is incredible. You get lots of like little bumps, which gives some really surprising ejector airtime. The inversion that heads you through the station, also really cool. I think it's the probably the second best of the inversions. And then just more airtime. It's it's a really, really good roller coaster this. And as I was saying before, I think, I think it could be Vekoma's best. It, it's certainly in that conversation with the likes of Fly. 
I can't think of many better than this. Branding. So we have a Vacoma family boomerang. You've never seen me ride one of these before, have you? Um, yeah, it's called Sarvan. Looks quite cool. Had a little uh, splashdown element there, which is already superior to Hyperia's on the basis that I can actually see the thing. So that's all cool. But yeah, may as well get on this while we're here. They are usually quite fun. This looks very similar to the layout of the Quest that I rode last week. So let's go give it a go. That's a really cool sign as well. I like that sort of weathered look. From context, I'm guessing the Sarvan is Danish for saw or something to that effect. In fact, I can hear soaring would suggest that. Sarvan was a perfectly good Vekoma family boomerang. They all kind of do the same thing, don't they? And that was very similar to the Quest at Emerald Park, similar to Ekipa Light Explorers at Energy Landia. What I will say though, is where you've got the uh, hump on the spike, near the front, as you came down backwards, got absolutely boofed out of my seat. I was quite uh, surprised by that. So yeah, good is as expected really. These all kind of do the same thing. And it feels like at this point, just about every theme park has one. So this is interesting. This sort of food area here, they just have a bunch of barbecues out. I guess people can just bring their food and use them. No idea, but quite a cool concept. So it's just a really interesting vibe here at Farrup Summerland. There's no audio whatsoever. And most of the time I'd be quite critical of that because I think audio can really help the immersion of a theme park. But when your theme park is all about being immersed in nature, actually just hearing the birds sing and the rustling of the leaves and people's screams in the background, it all kind of works. So yeah, I'm liking this so far. Tog. Guys, I need your help. This deer is gonna run directly into the path of oncoming industrial farm machinery if you don't like the video. So help out a deer, yeah? So here we have something called Raven's Huel. No idea what it is. Could just be a crow that sends you healthy drinks in the post. But I'm gonna go and investigate because it looks interesting. Well, it appears to be a fun house. So let's try and navigate. Oh, it's so dark in here. All right, Fox. Oh wow, we've got some sort of punch bags. Trommel. I mean, they put little footprint. Ah, it was all, all to deceive me all along. Got done. That seems to be broadcasting some sort of error message. Hmm. Oh. oh. <laughs> this room's very crooked and I swear it's moving. Oh. Oh my god. <laughs> I feel drunk. <laughs> Okay. Well, I didn't get any heal. Well, up next we have Lynette, which does admittedly sound like 
a librarian from Clacton. However, it's a Gertzlauer launch coaster, very much in the same vein as Anubis over at Plops Landapan, which is a great coaster, really, really punchy. So, quite looking forward to this. So Lynette was really solid. He was, I think, just about as expected, probably a bit more aggressive than Anubis is. The heels in particular produce some really aggressive ejector airtime. Kind of killed by the over the shoulder restraints and he did get a couple of neck bangs in there as well. So that's a perfect example of a coaster that with lap bars would probably be like a really, really good coaster. And with over the shoulder strength, it's still just a good coaster. I really enjoyed it. The launch was punchy. Like I say, loads of airtime over his hills. The inversions, like I say, with those restraints, did get a couple of jabs to the neck, but overall, really powerful coaster. That, that had a lot of force to it. Very enjoyable. So they have these signs all around the park, and I really like how they've got little pictures of what the ride is or what the uh, service is next to them. Really cool, little touch, like that. Well, there aren't many theme parks you can come and get a banging Thai meal. This is a pork panang curry with a couple of bottles of water. This costs 159 krona, which is just under 20 quid. So yeah, on the steeper side, as a lot of things are here in Denmark, but this looks pretty banging. So that was pretty good lunch. Uh, tasty, filling, did the job. I'm now walking the other side. When I came in through the entrance earlier, I turned right and went round towards Phonix. I'm gonna go the other way. We've got two more major coasters to do and more boating lake action. So they do actually have a water park here as well, which I believe is included in the ticket. Um, unfortunately, while the weather does look lovely, the chill is definitely there in the wind. So I think I'll be giving this sort of thing a miss, but again, great that they have this option here if it's something that people are interested in. So here is Orkanen, suspended above the lake there. Looks really nice, love the color scheme. Blue and white always just works, doesn't it? Hello Shambhala. Um, yeah, looking forward to this. So we've got both of them right next to each other here. Falcon or Khan. I think I'm gonna do Falcon first. Get some wooden action. Falcon was quite a pleasant surprise, a very rare SNS wooden coaster there. And it is a tale of two element types, the airtime hills, which were fantastic and produced some standing airtime, like I was fully out of my seat for a couple of seconds each time. And the helices, which are rough as balls and just shuffle you all over the place. It's not a massively long layout. I thought it's quite short. I think as you come into the helix at the end, you feel as though you've got longer to go and then you just wind up into the station. But that's probably better than I expected to be, to be fair. And I'm gonna try, get around, jump on the back row, 
uh, after I've done Orkanen, I just see how the air time feels at the back, but yeah, that wasn't bad at all. So heading into the queue for Orkana, this is a Vekoma suspended coaster. I did mistakenly think earlier this might be, oh, double coasters. I thought this might be the Intamin, but that's actually at Jers, which I'm visiting tomorrow, so that'll be cool. So yeah, kind of expecting very standard Vekoma family suspended coaster vibes here, but I'm okay with that. They're usually good fun and it's all over a lake. I mean, what's not to like? And just to the right here as well, you have the Farup Hotel. There's loads of smoke effects around here as well, which is really cool. And some sort of boat. Well, I guess Orkanen has a fishing theme based on the boats, the fishing nets full of starfish and the hanging fish. Hope they're at least being smoked. Orkanen was a perfectly decent Vekoma family suspended coaster. Had a lot of the hits that you usually get with Vekoma. Uh, the drop was fine into a tunnel with loads of steam effects, so the POV might have just got clouded up at that point. I don't know. However, the overbank coming out of the, uh, of the drop, really cool, quite forceful there. Uh, the helices pulled a lot of G-force and there was a weird little ejector airtime moment towards the end of the ride as well, which was uh, unexpected, but overall, fairly good um, another two lap special there they really do love sending people around for re-rides here which is uh, which is cool so yeah quite happy with that and as it happens you exit Orkanen directly opposite the entrance to Falcon so it seems a bit daft not to go and get this back row ride doesn't it Well, a back row on Falcon there, followed by an extra tour for a second back row. Um, I think the front's better. Uh, the airtime is definitely still there, but I don't feel it was as clean as the front. Um, at the back, because the front of the train's pulling back up into the next hill, you sort of shuffle, you sort of get the drag over and then you shuffle back in again. So yeah, it's not that sort of real clean standing airtime that I was getting at the front, but still a decent coaster. The helixes, or helices I should say, are brutal, but I thought that was all right. They even have a mini golf course here as well. And it gives me an excuse to cross this lake. It really is quite a stunning park here. They really use the natural landscape well. And um, I was just thinking how it, it kind of feels like the, the antidote to Disney. Like you go to a Disney park and everything's in your face and here it's so chilled and relaxed. The ride ops are all really friendly and helpful, encouraging re-rides and that kind of thing, so. Oh wow, you can literally just pick up a club and go. I'm not gonna do that because uh, I'm competitive and I'm by myself. I'm not sure what they've been up to to deserve this reputation, but Alan K, Torben, Alan S, you bunch of slags. A limited array of fridge magnets, but I did get this funky little ferret one to add to the collection. Well, you don't see this at British theme parks. Fresh fruit and veg available to purchase. I wish it was a little warmer because uh, I quite fancy that, but uh, looks like it could be a bit of a drencher. So Flagermusen is a spinning wild mouse or is it a spinning wild bat? I mean, 
I suppose if you had a wild mouse coaster in the flying position, that would technically be accurate, wouldn't it? Anyway, we've all just got drenched there with some steam, so um, let's go and ride something. Flagermusen was certainly a roller coaster. Not sure there's much more to add. Um, spinning was quite violent there. I got thrown about all over the place, smashed my elbow uh, on the side of the train. Not ideal, but yeah, I continue to ride those things even though they're not that enjoyable. However, spinning was intense. Um, it didn't have over the shoulder restraints like the awful Viking at Energylandia, so that is always a saving grace. In fact, I believe that video went online today, so if you want to see me get absolutely beaten to bits on a terrible roller coaster, go give it a look. I like how they have a lot of these just sort of random bouncy things and playgrounds and stuff. There's just things that kids can just come and jump on. So this is all part of the log bloom theming and I guess some sort of gold, little gold thing. This must be cool, how the water kind of traces down and then into the log bloom trough. I do wonder if this park actually maybe started out as a series of boating lakes and nature reserves. It's certainly got that feel to it, but when you add some roller coasters in, it makes for a nice mix. So heading into the queue for Mine Expressen, a 1992 Vekoma mine train. a fairly generic Vacoma mine train there. My bony spine really does not like the backs of those trains. Uh, they're not the most comfortable, but layout was decent. I mean, the first drop was actually quite a lot more forceful than I was expecting, but otherwise fairly standard. And I'm still finding random little hidden sections of the park. Got some more of the train railway here. And then there's just like little cars right here, just tucked away by itself. We are 148 kilometers from Leesburg. Maybe I should have factored that into this trip as well. Well, look at this bad boy. This is the Phonix ice cream sundae. 64 kroner, which is a bit on the steep side, which is about seven quid, 750, but does look like a bit of a beast, doesn't it? So I'm gonna down this. 
So I had a bit of a wander around the park, seen a few other bits and pieces, got some footage there of some of the other attractions. And I might have accidentally found myself back in the queue line for Phonex. It's weird how things like that happen, isn't it? Well, a sixth ride on Phonix there, and that time my phone went into SOS mode because the side button was pressed too many times while it was in my pocket. So I think that's probably a good sign and, and represents the sort of forces you're likely to feel on this, especially if you happen to be a phone. Um, I really like that. I think it's comfortably the best ride here. And it's all presented so nicely too, with all these wooden buildings, the fly through the station, even just the green track, it just sits in with the environment. So yeah, really impressed with Phonix. I'm uh, really impressed with Farrab Summerland as a whole. It's a very different feeling park. I'm not sure if you can see me because it's quite dark, but I've rejoined the queue for Lynette. Uh, I thought I'd get another ride on this. The launch was punchy, had some quite interesting elements. So I felt six rides on Phonix was enough. So good to get back on Lynette again, front row again that time. It's a solid coaster. The launch is really punchy. You really get pushed into the back of your seat. Uh, the airtime hills are strong, the, the first top hat is, the second airtime, and then the, um, the mid-course brake run. You really do get uh, ejected out of your seat on those. It's just, there's, there's a bend and then the, the first inversion. The Gertzlauer restraints sit kind of right at the side of my neck, and it's just hard to avoid taking a bit of a slap there, which is a little bit uncomfortable, but if that thing had lap bars, it would be a... That'd be a really good coaster. As it stands, it's solid, it's well worth riding. Um, the launch alone is worth it. So that's all for my day here at Farup Summerland here in Denmark. It's been a really good day. I mean, it's a lovely park. It's so picturesque and relaxed and chilled. And it's worth noting that entrance to get in today in advance was only around 25 pounds. So very reasonable value as well. I think on park, the prices were a little bit more expensive. The cost of food and things like that, a little on the prices side. Sorry, it's very windy. So hopefully uh, you can hear the audio, but I'd certainly recommend this place. I think maybe they do need another couple of rides to really fill that lineup out. I, I did feel in the last hour and a half of the day that I was sort of wandering around looking for things to do. Uh, having kind of ridden everything that I wanted to. So Phonix, great coaster. Lynette is very solid. I think the SNS Woody Falcon also really good. It's such a picturesque park. The water eyes look fun too. So yeah, I'd highly recommend this place. So that's all from this video, but I am going to be back at Jers Summerland tomorrow, which is the other big park here in Northern Denmark. So subscribe if you'd like to see that and watch this video up on the screen now my visit to Emerald Park last week where I rode two brand new coasters in Ireland.